In this blog, we discuss clustering, which is a set of techniques that tries to group observations based on their statistical similarity. Clustering, or unsupervised machine learning, as we'll discuss later in the blog, is widely used in today's world. It powers a lot of applications that you may or may not know that interact with, but decide certain aspects of your life. And it powers things like the recommendation systems that companies like Amazon use on their websites, all the way to decisions that policymakers make about how to allocate public funding and how uh, retailers decide where to mail different types of advertisements. Let's have a look a bit more in detail about what is clustering and why it's relevant before we delve into the technical details. And to begin this blog, I always like to start with this sentence attributed to Albert Einstein, which says, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. And the point here really is this, the second part, the idea that certain phenomena are really complex and to understand them, it's important to try to simplify them. But if we continue the, pro the process of simplification, at some point we start losing important information. <clears throat> and that's when we know we should have stopped a bit before. Why do I like to start with this quote? Well, because a social scientist or a scientist most of the phenomena we study are complex and multidimensional. And to understand them properly and to obtain a more comprehensive picture into um, this phenomena, it's important to consider this multifaceted character. Now, this, which conceptually makes perfect sense, contrasts with much of the statistics that we've actually been seeing in this course. Much of what we've seen in this course falls within the univariate analysis set of techniques, which focuses on studying one single dimension. If you go back to the exploratory spatial data analysis, much of what we saw was focused on understanding the spatial patterns of a single variable. In this blog, the idea of clustering is being able to bring several dimensions into one and thus better understanding um, multivariate realities or taking a multivariate perspective on, on our data set. And here is a couple of examples from the social science to highlight this relevance of multivariate um, phenomena and thus the, the need for multivariate, multivariate analysis. For example, when we look at what is a neighborhood, we could say, well, we can classify a neighborhood based on the percentage of foreign born but that would focus in only on one aspect of what we would broadly consider a neighborhood, which is much more about character, is about, yes, it's about the percentage of foreign born that a neighborhood has, but also the ethnicities, the religion, the levels of education, etc., that we need to take into account <clears throat> when we um, study the social construct of a neighborhood. Similarly, economists usually look at things like years of schooling, or average income to classify or to measure human development. But human development as a concept is a much more multifaceted and much more complex um, phenomenon. So in this case, also simplifying all of this richness into a single variable might be going a bit too far in, the Einstein, in Einstein's views. It might be keeping it too simple or more than it should be. Another example is when we consider deprivation, which is also a rich and complex uh, concept. Other, uh, some studies focus on monthly income or, or income in general. But again, we know that deprivation is not only about income, it's also about accessibility to jobs. It's also about um, having access to social capital, to a, a to be able to rely on a community, etc. So all of these multifaceted phenomena that really underpin much of what we care about in social science sometimes are best understood when, we're, when they're considered more holistically. And to do that, it's important to not be too reductionist about how we measure these phenomena. 
because how we measure is going to inform much of our analysis and thus much of our conclusions. In this context, the idea of grouping or clustering is one of simplifying without losing too much um, of, the, of the richness and detail. So going back to Einstein's quote, the idea of grouping comes as a middle, as a sweet spot between simplifying but not simplifying too much. And what are we talking really conceptually? What's the intuition be be behind clustering and behind um, grouping? Well, the idea is that we want to define a number of categories based on several characteristics. Here is where the multidimensional aspect comes in. And the key of, or the trick that that grouping and clustering <clears throat> manages to pull off is that at the end of the day, we will be looking at a single variable, but this variable is not continuous. It's not a, a single indicator that focuses on one aspect of the problem we're interested in. Instead, is a categorical variable that summarizes information that is being fed from several and potentially a large number of different variables. So maybe you can start seeing how it hits the best of both worlds. It uses information from a lot of data and a lot of variables, but then it manages to summarize it into a single variable or into a single set of categories. Now, what is the, the goal? The idea is to find a, a, the category for which each observation fits best. So when we're when we perform clustering, what we're going to be doing at the same time is two things. One is defining the classes, the categories, into which our data set are going to be assigned. And at the same time, and the process is simultaneous, you can't do one without the other in, in the context of clustering that we're going to see. At the same time that we're defining the categories, we're also assigning every observation in our data set into one of these categories. And as we were hinting just a second ago, by doing this, we can hopefully reduce the complexity because we're going to move from a situation where we have a potentially large number of variables describing a phenomena, describing a neighborhood, for example. But at the same time, so we're going to reduce that number of, of variables into a single one. But at the same time, because that single one is a categorical variable, we're going to be able to retain much of the statistical variation on the one hand, but also much of the richness and granularity, hopefully, that this multidimensional perspective affords us. And if we do it well, the output, this categorical, this typology, this categorical variable that we'll be producing is a much easier to understand way to convey a lot of the richness and, and complexity that goes into the into the exercise. With this, we're going to see two types of grouping in this block. One is what I'm going to call here non-spatial clustering or traditional aspatial uh, clustering. And the other one, which is much more specific to the context of geographic data science, is what I will call regionalization. <clears throat> 